Good morning, and I'm very, very happy to be here. I want to lead off by saying that mental illness can be a wedge. Right? A wedge between the person and the reality, or a wedge between health and illness. And it's also a wedge that spans service, provi service provision, that mental illness can be a wedge between a service provider and the person receiving the services. It can also be a wedge between families. It can also be a wedge between, uh, I think, our ability to receive and accept someone else. And I think that more and more over the last few years have been done to dis dispel some of the, the kind of myths and, and, uh, of mental illness. But in many cases, it isn't enough. I think many people living with mental illness still are stigmatized. They're still ostracized from communities. And, um, you know, I, I've actually heard, you know, I've heard people living with mental illness saying, you know, I'd rather be X and you fill in the blank than mentally ill, right? That of all of the marginalized people in our societies, people living with mental illness are probably the most marginalized. So, in what I am here today to, 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 to try to, 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 to kind of uh, format is to ask the question of what can faith communities do around mental illness? What have you done? What, what do you think might be done? What have you seen done? And kind of map that in, in kind of and looking towards the future of what can we do for the future. My example, and, and you know, it, it has been my own work in working with community and kind of consultant basis. And I, I recently completed one of this, this series of, of, of workshops that I do around spirituality and mental illness, right? Spirituality and mental health. And it has been working with community-based agencies serving different communities and asking that question, where is religion and spirituality in this whole mix? And what can that done with someone's mental health? How can service providers start to understand the role of spiritual and uh, spirituality and religion in the, in, the, in, the, in the health of the person that they are seeing? Another piece of it has been, how can faith leaders start to identify and learn about mental illness and mental wellness so that they can better serve the people that they are serving. It has been my experience that, that many of our faith traditions really don't want to deal with that, right? Some of us see about oh, well, it's something that, that we can cure by whatever you, you name, all kind of prayers or activities or whatever. And we don't do it very well. Just like most people in our society, religious really care providers are afraid of, of mental illness, right? They, they are uncertain about it, they don't know what to do with it, etc. And the reality is that most of, of the people who eventually show up in, in mental health clinics, they have already spoken to their faith leader, right? And sometimes the faith leader has no resources, they don't know what to do, they don't know where to go. And we are hoping that we can change some of that. We are, we are, so the project that I worked with recently was with spirituality and the mental health of youth. And I worked with a, with a, 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 a youth service provider that had difficulty in understanding, um, one, the, 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 how mental illness was presented, first of all but also had difficulty in accessing and speaking about spirituality or religion in the lives of the people that they were seeing. I think that people are afraid of mental illness, yes, but there are also many service providers that, that, but that might not be religiously based or, or connected sometimes are afraid to start a conversation about spiritual well-being, religious practices, etc. And especially where spiritual well-being and, relig and religious practices can be a source of strength and help for people living with mental illness. So my work with this youth provider was around that. How do you start to identify some of your own strengths? How well, how do you start to, 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 to recognize some of the issues that are at work? 
and how do you start to build on some of the strength of the people that you're seeing in order to help them cope better? So that's what I've done. I'm hoping to engage you in a conversation that is, you know, more deep than that, and, and try to, to, to ask those questions and, and come to a place where you can start to su suggest maybe some solutions where faith communities can work better together, where faith communities can impact the service providers, and what might be some of the needs of faith communities around mental health and mental wellness. Thank you.